I want to get into the latest AI technology in a rare and exclusive interview. I spoke with Anthropic's co-founder and CEO, Dario Amodi. Uh, Anthropic is the maker of Claude 3. It is arguably now one of the most powerful AI models out there, if not the most powerful. I started out by asking him about how Anthropic differentiates itself from the other AI models. You know, all these models have some similarities and some differences, right? The similarities is that all of them are, you know, trained on large amounts of data with very large models that use large amounts of compute. The basic formula for that is, is similar. But what's different is what you do after, when you train the model how to be conversational, how to talk to humans, what areas it's good at, how it answers questions. And so we had a team called Claude Character that was focused on the personality of Claude as a model. Um, uh, and that team focused on, you know, again, how to make the model more warm, more human, more engaging. Of course, it also focused on these questions of safety and reliability. And so we put a lot of effort into making sure that on one hand, you know, the model doesn't do genuinely bad things, doesn't give false information, but that it does that while, you know, not, not refusing, uh, you know, uh, uh, harmless queries, right? So drawing that line between those things well. And we believe that that's one of the things that Anthropic as a company specializes in, doing a very good job of that. Where do you think you are on the journey of the various sort of levels of these models towards AGI? Meaning, if you're at three now, what does four and five and six and seven look like? And how do you stack rank even yourself now against how you think about these other players? But I don't think that AGI is a fully coherent concept. Um, so, you know, 10 years ago when almost no one was working on generalized models and everyone was working on very specialized models, uh, I used to talk about AGI because it was so different from what everyone was doing. Um, but now I think we're in a different place where everyone is building models that in a way are general, right? There's, they may be worse than humans at a bunch of things, but they try to do everything and some of them they're very good at. So I don't think about AGI, but I think what is real is the models are getting better and better at more tasks that more and more humans do. So when Elon Musk comes out and says that he thinks, you know, in a year from now that, you know, AI could be smarter than, you know, an individual, and in you know several years from now, could be smarter than all the individuals collectively. You think what? Yeah. So I mean, I think, I think you know another way to restate what what I what I said before is that you know smarter isn't a single thing, right? Right now, there's some things the models are much smarter than humans at, right? Like you know, like if I talk to Claude three, knows a lot more about you know the history of cricket or the history of samurai in Japan. Um, but if I ask it to do some very simple things like, uh, you know, uh, like plan my day or something like that, it doesn't even necessarily, it's not even hooked up to the right things to necessarily do that. And, and, and there are other limitations as well. So I, I, I think it, what is correct about that is the models are going to get smarter and smarter and we will reach a point probably relatively soon where the models can do many tasks uh, better than humans can. Um, but there will always be strengths, there will always be weaknesses. Um, and so I think the picture we're going to see right. is, is, much more, is much more complex than, uh, you know, than, than some kind of one line thing might right. indicate. When people talk about the next generation of the stuff and they talk about the limiting factors, they talk about processing power, mm -hmm. they talk about the energy to produce that processing power, and they talk about data. How much data is there out there? Uh, people now have talked about using synthetic data to train on. Where, where are you going to get the data to train on ultimately? Yes, uh, so uh, one of the things is what, what, what you hit on, right? We're working on several methods for developing synthetic data. Um, so these are ideas where you can take real data that's present in the model and have the model interact with real data in some way to produce additional or different data. But it all depends on the original data being good data, I assume. And, could we ever get to a situation where if we're all just training off of synthetic data, the data becomes bad? It becomes a garbage in, garbage out situation? Yeah, I mean, this is what a lot of the research that's focused on synthetic data is, is focused on, right? Um, so if you, if, you, if you don't do this well, you don't get much more than you started with. Um, but it actually is possible by injecting very small amounts of new information to get more than you started with. If we go back to systems of eight years ago, so if you remember AlphaGo, which was a system right. that was used to play Go, note that the model there just trains against itself 
with nothing other than the rules of Go to adjudicate. And those little rules of Go, that little additional piece of information, is enough to take the model from no ability at all to smarter than the best human at right. Go. Um, and so if you do it right with just a little bit of additional information, you, I think it may right. be possible to get an infinite data generation engine. You're in an unusual position where you have major partnerships and investments from two of the major tech players in Amazon and in Google. Both of them also compete with you in that Google is creating Gemini and Amazon is creating something called Olympus, which they haven't released yet. How do you think about this frenemy, friend, and what, what is this? Yes, um, so I don't know, maybe if we, if we back up a little bit, like why do these cloud partnerships exist in the first place? Um, ultimately, they exist because of economic complementarity, right? Anthropic is a company that focuses on producing AI. We don't focus on producing chips, and we don't focus on you know, provisioning cloud, you know, building data centers or provisioning cloud instances to, uh, you know, to, to serve the models on. And so these, these other companies that we're partners with, the cloud providers, provide something that's complementary to us in an economic sense. What do you make of the argument that big tech is trying to hoover up and control this new technology? Uh, whether Microsoft is partnering with OpenAI or Google and Amazon are partnering with you. Yeah, so you know, I can't, I can't speak to other companies and other partnerships, but I think the mere fact that we're partnering with two different companies to put our models on the cloud um, and you know, various other aspects of the partnership you know, shows that you know, we're not beholden to one particular company, right? We're an independent actor. Neither of these companies have board seats, board seats, board seats at Anthropic. Um, uh, you know, we, we offer our models on our own, uh, on our own first party. Right. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, Google, as a, Google as a cloud where we offer our models, Amazon as a cloud where we offer our models, and we also offer them first party. So there are a number of ways in which we're simply an independent company that operates differently. Again, the fact that these clouds provide something that's complementary to what right. we provide makes these partnerships make sense.